Welcome to yet another exciting edition of Sports Talk here on Atlantic Television Network. On this edition of the program, all is now set for the hockey tournament in Ibadan. And coming in for the world of tennis, Rafa Nadal wins his first match after a long layoff. In football, two teams qualify for the Champions League semi-final. Details of this and many more the U.S. one will return from the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. It's Sports Talk here on Atlantic Television Network and Kingsley Manuel is here. Thank you very much uh, for having me, Siri. Very happy to be here this morning. As usual, we'll get started from the local scene where over 300 players across 36 states of the Federation will converge at the hockey pitch of the Lincoln Salami Stadium in Ibadan to participate in the four-day national hockey tournament uh, kicking off exactly from uh, today. Uh, Kingsley, uh, hockey tournaments are not uh, currency here in Nigeria. So this is cheering coming from uh, the OE State government. Yes, I think uh, really, really cheering a uh, one. And or maybe participating more. At this point, I think it's a good one from uh, the Ohio State government and as well as uh, the Hockey Federation uh, for putting this one together. I think uh, the aim for this one is just to prepare you know, the athlete for the forthcoming international indoor games, of course, that uh, will be coming up in Namibia. And uh, for me, I think it's a good one. At least with these tournaments, the Hockey Federation will be able to pick out the best you know, hockey players you know, for uh, that uh, particular indoor tournament in Namibia. So it's a, it's a good one. And of course, uh, we look forward to see how this one will go. It's a room, like I mentioned, uh, for them to pick the best ahead of uh, the tournament. And we hear that there are huge, you know, prize money uh, that will be given to the players. That will actually go a long way in motivating the players as well. Seven hundred thousand naira is, uh, and of course, a gold medal will be that if you win the, ten, uh, the as the most valuable player. This is uh, interesting. Uh, we don't get to see many championships in. Uh, uh, in uh, hockey on local seed, not to talk of a uh, one where there is a uh, uh, price money. This is really, really nice. Uh, for me, the motivation is that uh, if you are selected, uh, you're going out there to Namibia to be part of continental uh, championship and thereafter, I'm sure uh, you could have an international recognition as a player of uh, hockey. This is, uh, we really need to see Nigerian hockey players at you know, top level uh, like I said, at the continent and beyond the continent as well, but who says uh, we can't have a Nigerian uh, hockey player go international, be a professional hockey player, so to say? Yes, of course. Uh, take a look at it. I think it's a room of exposing uh, the players, of course, that we have in the country uh, to the international scene. Uh, when it has to do with hockey, I, I think uh, Nigeria um, will not really be that you know, very fantastic uh, when it comes to hockey organization over the years and our players of course has not really tested what it really means of course you know to uh, play the game you know hockey in the country we all see other countries of course giving their players you know international exposure but the hockey federation down here in nigeria has not really gotten what it takes of course you know to expose the players and i think there's an opportunity you know for the players you know to actually utilize in order to I give themselves that international exposure. For me, it's actually a very good initiative, and I think, of course, uh, the players, you know, will actually do whatever they can uh, to make sure uh, they buy into this particular one. Talk about Nigeria trying to make inroads uh, with uh, championship in uh, hockey, but uh, today it uh, definitely will be kick off uh, runs through uh, till Friday, which the organizers of this, especially uh, the Yosti government, the very best of uh, hockey championship. Out there, aim at uh, selecting hockey players that will represent Nigeria in Namibia in the next uh, few weeks uh, from now. Away from uh, hockey, let's look at uh, marathon and the world acclaim, and of course, world athletics gold label of Pope International 10 kilometer race has been uh, recognized as a blessing to Nigeria, having been around in the last 10 years. This is uh, historic, uh, it, doesn't go, it doesn't come easy to have a marathon event in Nigeria. Not to talk of one that has been recognized by the World Athletics as a known 10 kilometer race. For me, I think we must give kudos you know, to the organizers of the Okwekwe race. Uh, this race has been very consistent you know, year in, year out, and uh, we've seen you know, much recognition for this one. Actually, just like you mentioned, actually being recognized by the World Athletics body um, is a very huge one. I think um, uh, at this point in time, the Athletic Federation of Nigeria should also. Uh, look for means, you know, to uh, in, uh, improve uh, for the race, of course, to be better than what you know we've seen at this point in time. Because uh, the race have actually, you know, given Nigeria that much recognition when it has to do with marathon. We have so many, you know, uh, marathon races in the country. We have the Lagos Marathon. Uh, we have uh, the 
other race, uh, marathon races as well. But the Okpukbe uh, race of uh, marathon race has been, you know, the standout, you know, has actually stood out you know, among all of them. So for me, I think um, it's then time for we to look at this race and see what we can possibly uh, do. We've seen, you know, athletes coming from all the, uh, coming all the way from Kenya, Uganda, Namibia, you know, to come participate, you know, in this particular one, giving Nigeria that top recognition when it has to do with, you know, marathon. So for me, I think it's a, it's a very good one. And 10 years it is, of course, so far in the country, you will see a lot, of course, has been put in place, you know, to make sure that uh, this race, you know, uh, standard. But I think uh, with this as well, we should also be lo uh, we should also be looking at the fact that we can also produce marathon runners in the country. If we can have such a race, that means there's a possibility that uh, we can all go all the way in producing marathon you know, runners. If you take a look at it, Nigeria would not really have those who are much interested you know, in marathon or who those who have done much when it has to do with marathon. When you talk about marathon, you mentioned the likes of Ethiopia. That's where you see athletes coming up with uh, impressive performance, Kenya, Uganda and the rest of them. So we having such a race, of course, in the country, I think is an opportunity where we have to utilize it in producing marathon runners. But so far, 10 years for the Quick Bay race, I think uh, it's really been a good one so far. Congratulations to organizers of the Quick Bay race. Uh, one of Nigeria's uh, uh, internationally recognized marathon event. Uh, it doesn't uh, uh, come that uh, easy. It's been around for 10 years and uh, kicking, getting more and more uh, recognition. Let's stay away from that and then go straight uh, to cricket. And talking about cricket reminds me at this hour that the female yellow greens, that's what the uh, national team is called uh, in the cricket, uh, are getting to camp uh, in the very first week of May ahead of uh, an inter a continental tournament in uh, Rwanda. We understand Rwanda as a host country and six other countries have been confirmed uh, for the expanded 10th edition of the cricket uh, tournament which runs from uh, the 27th of May uh, to the 8th of June at the Gahan International Cricket Stadium in Kigali, Rwanda. Including the, uh, Uganda as the um, host nation, we have uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Kenya, Malawi, and Cameroon. Nigeria definitely should be able to be distinct in this group. Yes, of course. I think when you take, take, take a look at the performance of the female yellow green over, over the years, you see that uh, they have uh, what it takes you know, to compete in this particular one. Uh, this, of course, uh, I think will be uh, either their fourth or fifth appearance you know, in this particular tournament. So they've been here over time and they've gotten uh, much experience. The last time we saw them play was at the African Games. Uh, where, of course, they were able to take out the likes of Namibia, uh, Uganda, you know, to claim a bronze medal. And that actually is a huge statement, of course, for the female yellow greens of uh, Nigeria. I think uh, they've actually done too well over time, and uh, they pre their level of preparation has been top-notch. And I don't see the likes of Uganda, uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Kenya, Malawi, and uh, Cameroon, of course, giving them that, you know, tough time. I think the female yellow greens, taking a look at what we've done so far, and for the fact that, you know, this is not the first time they'll be attending this one. Is that the fourth or fifth time now? They've got too much experience about this tournament. I think uh, they actually have what it takes, of course, to compete favorably in this particular one. Well, let's hope that uh, they will go out there to Uganda and compete. Uh, after all, they came third uh, at last. Uh, yeah, they took a bronze medal. Well, let's stay away from that and quickly look at the uh, latest decision coming from the World Athletics. Uh, Kisley, mm. we understand that... Uh, there will be a lot of prize money at the Paris Olympic Games. Uh, a lot of people are beginning to say, this is completely against the Olympic spirit. Uh, you don't award money for Olympic performances. But uh, in cycling, uh, there will be uh, the, become the very first federation to offer prize money at the Olympics this summer. This is uh, against the tradition of the Olympics. Uh, spirit. Yeah, really, really against the tradition of uh, the Olympic spirit. Uh, because what... Uh, uh, they do what the uh, Olympic uh, Committee. What they do is the fact that uh, they distribute money, you know, to the different federations. That sporting federations that will be coming down, you know, to participate, and then the federations can now fund, you know, the athlete. But um, the World Athletics and uh, the cycling, you know, uh, feder uh, federation coming to say that they want to, you know, pay athletes, you know, who win, who win uh, the gold medal, silver and bronze medal on their own. I think uh, this is another thing entirely of this support in time, and that's why some persons are actually kicking against it. Somebody, the only people is kicking against it, that the fact that it's against 
the Olympic the spirit. But for me, I think it's a way of you know enriching the athletes. Apart from enriching the athlete as well, is a way of motivation because uh, we hear, according to the World Athletic, that uh, a gold medal, of course, uh, will go home with about fifty thousand uh, dollars. That's a very huge one. Thirty-nine thousand. Uh, there's 9,400 pounds if you want to convert it to pounds, you know, in that one. Very huge money if you ask me, uh, Mr. Siri. For me, I think it's a way of enriching the athlete, not only enriching them, motivating them. I think uh, the Olympic body should look for a means, you know, to see how to figure this in. Because for me, I think it's a good one, apart from the fact that, yes, they have to, the Olympic body have to fund the federations that will be coming, you know, to pay their athlete allowances and all of that. But I think the World Athletics body, you know, coming up with this initiative, not bad, even the cycling body as well. For me, I don't see anything wrong with it, despite the fact that they are kicking against it. I think it's a way of enriching the athlete, not only enriching them, like I mentioned, but a means of motivating the athlete. Great, getting that huge amount of money, I tell you, will go a long way in helping this athlete for their welfare. Talking about it, helping the athletes, uh, even uh, Cole himself, uh, president of the World Athletics, says it goes a long way to assist the athletes, you know, mm -hmm. you know, stay afloat. And I think, uh, uh, what do you compete for if nothing comes your way? It, it, uh, I'm not too sure the Olympic spirit uh, should be against this one. Uh, the, the athletes need to survive, right, to, yeah. to participate at the Olympic Games. For, for me, I think there should be a waiver, no matter the rules, no matter the constitution. Uh, there should be a waiver, you know, for this to materialize. Just like I mentioned earlier, it took a long way uh, in helping these athletes. Uh, sometimes, you know, the money that some of these federations, of course, pay these athletes is not even good, good enough to help the athletes on the long run. Uh, but uh, coming up with this initiative, I think it actually will help. Some of these athletes, they rely on sometimes endorsement deals, you know, uh, to help themselves, you know. They have so many things to cut out for. They have to pay their trainers. Uh, sometimes they have to make sure they pay their nutritionists. They also have to, you know, get a good food to eat. And this actually costs a lot. Some of them have to go a long way in undergoing certain training. And this, all of this costs money. So if they don't have the money, how will they be able to survive and continue their career? So for me, I think it's a good initiative. There should be a waiver for this to materialize. 50,000 US dollars uh, for winning gold, uh, that should be a good sum uh, to motivate these uh, athletes. Huge means of motivation, huge means of motivation for it. And I think uh, all the athletes will be going out for, you know, for this particular one. And this will actually bring more competition, you know, necessary, you know, in the Olympics. Looking at the fact that you stand a chance of winning such an amount of money. The athletes want to go all out, you know, uh, to make sure they do all they can uh, to get this particular one. So, not only enriching them, but, uh, you know, bringing more competition in the Olympics. It is an amateur uh, sport, so to say. Yeah, an amateur sport, uh, but for me, I, I think it's also a means whereby, you know, they should also imbibe this uh, particular one, no matter whatever, you know, uh, they will be looking at, no matter whatever consideration, you know, at this point in time. Let's quickly go to golf now, and uh, Roy McEnroy, you yes, remember him, uh, a Masters uh, champ a couple of times, says he will play on the PJ Tour for the rest of his career as a squash model, making a big money move to the LIV uh, Golf. Of course, you know, the LIV Golf uh, in Saudi Arabia has been uh, one that has attracted most of the top golfers. But the four-time major champion, Roy McIlroy, says he's been offered $850 million US dollars to join the Saudi Arabian circuit. Is this good enough to tempt a four-time champion, Roy McIlroy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very huge one, of course, uh, to tempt the man. But the man has actually come out to debunk uh, that particular one that uh, he didn't actually get such from what we've seen at this point in time. I think uh, there have been a very huge temptation, you know, to the players at the PGA Tour, looking at the, you know, the money in the LIV and all of that. But McIlroy is one man who has stood his ground and said, no matter how much is there, no matter how much is going to be paid and all of that, is not going to make you know put a uh, you know going to uh, step an inch you know to go uh, play for the LIV. I think it's one man who is very patriotic and uh, very uh, very determined you know to take what, whatever decision of course that comes his way. We've seen a very huge money in the uh, LIV, uh, but the man of course is one of uh, the golfers we've seen that has actually stood his ground. No matter the amount of money you throw at him, he said this is where he's going to play to the end of uh, his career. Well, uh, Imam already has a lot of money if you ask me, but. Uh... He is very principled there. The public investment fund from Saudi Arabia, where huge sums are being, you know, expended for golf and other sporting activities in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is very tempting. And uh, we've seen very top golfers around the world, you know, join the LIV uh, golf and uh, making a lot of returns. But uh, 
For Roy McEnroe, he believes there is more to it than the just uh, finance, and he's kept his cool with the PGA Tour and continues to emphasize that it is not all about money. Well, let's go to golf now. And talking about golf reminds me that the Barcelona Open just got underway. And one notable golfer. To have him back, you know, good to see him once again in the court. It's been a very, very long time. Everyone has been anticipating his return. And thank God we have him back, of course, uh, on uh, the court. He was, he was, he was paired against uh, a Flavio Cobulli, who was, of course, relatively an experienced you know, player. You know, and was able to get past him with a 6 2. Uh, 6 3 in that uh, particular one. Good comeback, you will see, uh, for Rafael Nadal after you know staying away for a very long time uh, due to injury. And at this point in time, we'll see how it goes for him because he said this is going to be his last lap uh, when it comes to his tennis uh, career. And not as uh, he's not seated very well when it has to do with the ATP ranking at this point 644 way back, you know, for a player like you know Rafael Nadal. But I think uh, let's see how far he's going to stay. We hope that injury do not come disrupt, of course, what he's trying to do for himself you know, at this point in time. He's one man who has also been in this uh, Barcelona Open for some time. And I think uh, coming back at this point in time will be another opportunity where, of course, uh, he will want to utilize very well. Talk about Rafa Nadal, uh, ranked number 644 in the world of uh, tennis. Who would have uh, thought of uh, that kind of ranking for Rafa Nadal? Mm -hmm. One man who has maintained number one status for several years um, and weeks and, and months, uh, returning to from number one to now number 644. But that's the beauty of ranking. You have to get the points. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, Rafa Nadal, no doubt, uh, in a very uncomfortable position. But coming up against a very inexperienced uh, Flavio should be a good way to... Uh, climb back to top ranking in the tennis. Good way, uh, good way to start, you know, after coming back from that injury because uh, as you mean, he was able to meet some of those guys, the likes of Yannick Sina, Casper Ruud, and the rest of them. Wouldn't have been very easy for him, but I think good way for him to test his strengths, good way for him to test his serve, you know, and all that he knows, of course, uh, in tennis. And I think for me, his comeback will be very, very competitive because. The young guys now on board are very, very much optimistic. The likes of Yannick Sina, Carlos Akaras, though things have not really gone well for Carlos Akaras. Talk about Casper Ruiz, Sissi Pass, of course, uh, who won the Monte Carlo Masters, Alexander Berev, Medvedev. These guys are open doing. And I think uh, if Rafa Nadal, of course, really have to go far, he needs to, of course, really up his game in time because the competition now in the ATP is very very strong and uh, for him to be able to challenge these guys that means he has to step up very very quick or else it will be difficult for him to maybe i know up his uh, ranking or maybe looking forward you know to win something for himself this is his last lap according to him and he's also looking forward to maybe win something we have about three grand slam remaining uh, this year can he lay his hand you know on any of them uh, talking about uh, uh, Grand Slam will understand that when it has to do with the clay court, he is, of course, um, a master down there. The French Open, of course, is coming up. How good and how prepared, of course, is he you know, to challenge in that particular one? One man, of course, everyone's also looking for is Novak Djokovic, who has not been very fantastic since this season got started. He was ousted out in uh, the Monte Carlo Masters and is still looking for a, 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 a title for himself uh, this season. So, taking a look at all of this, I think Rafa Nadal should step up his game because the boys on ground are very hungry uh, for you know titles talking about the boys on ground we have karen kashanov in action at any moment soon and of course there will be batista are good as well up against a very strong opponent the Barcelona opener used to be a very dominant area for uh yes rafa nadal he's spanish so you understand what it means it was like a home victory for him there carlos and uh another protege uh do i say the new rafa nadal uh, is in this one as well. No, uh, he actually also that uh, yeah, he, he about that there because of uh, injury. Uh, the injury has not been his best of friend uh, this uh, season. Even taking a look at his performance towards the end of last season, he has not been on a very very fantastic you know um, you know uh, level or form uh, from what we've seen at this point in time. I think Akaras of course really have to up his game because. Uh, as a top player, as uh, let's say, yes, of course, he's a top player because he's ranked number three at this point. 
uh, you have to not you don't have to relent because like i mentioned the competition is very steep yannick Sina, of course the man from italy is not letting any stone on turn at this point in time still trying to push you know to get you know to the limelight he just um caught uh, his second loss at this season so far despite that the man is looking very optimistic of achieving more so for me i think uh, carlos akaras you know uh, he's the defending champion of this one uh, but unfortunately injury of course has knocked him out you know from this one but i think it's a lesson for him we still have other atp tournaments uh, this year the, the grand slam i think um, it's a good one he actually opted out to get himself you know very much prepared you know for other atp tournaments and in grand slam because when you don't take care of yourself you know you have injury and you don't take time to treat it it becomes you know a problem for you going into you know the next tournament i think for me we we'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope uh, to see uh, Carlos Akaras bouncing back strongly. Well, let's go to basketball now because we have to wrap up this uh, uh, part of the program. Uh, and then talking about basketball reminds me that River Supers are getting uh, uh, in top shape ahead of the Basketball League uh, Savannah Conference, which comes up in uh, 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 Kigali. Uh, Kisley have prepared uh, River Supers uh, ahead of their Basketball League in Kigali, Rwanda. I think uh, the preparation is uh, in top notch. We just saw them finish uh, third in the Lewis Edem International Tournament. And now uh, they are preparing, they are camping now, preparing for the Basketball African League, you know, that will be coming up, you know, very, very soon. And uh, we hear the new players, of course, are all in ground. One man who is talking tough, you know, is uh, Will Perry, uh, who actually joined the team. And uh, he's saying that, of course, it's going to help River Supers, you know, get to the playoff of the Basketball African our league and that's a very huge dream of course if you ask me because river supers they've not got into the playoff the last uh you know time they went there is they will not see them of course you know in the playoff but if uh, the inclusion of these players you know can help them i think it's a great long way the man who is talking talking about perry of course has actually done a lot you know uh for in the basketball african uh, like you hear the record of uh, most uh, scored you know in a single game at uh, the basketball african league which is about 41 and I think it's good to have such a player, you know, in your team. That's by the fact that you take a look at his 29 years of age. Of course, you see, I expect him to have that level of energy. And that's in, not about the energy or probably that, um, you see, the, the skill. All those matters. All of that matters. But the experience is what River uh, Hoopers need at this point in time. Take a look at the players we have on ground. Uh, the players in the uh, basketball league down here in Nigeria. Most of them don't really have that experience. And couple with the fact that, we don't have a strong basketball league in the country. It makes it at some point difficult, you know, for them to be able to challenge other countries, you know, that uh, other African countries that will be coming from the basketball African league, but including these players, likes of uh, Wee Perry and the rest, and the two other players. I think that is a good one for River Supers trying to bring in experience, you know, too. They don't have to go there relying on what they have. Experience also have to come in play. And going for the Basketball African League, I think this is the second time that they will be making their appearance. I think um, with the first appearance and with this now, they will, they've will got much experience to be able to put themselves through. We hear a lot of preparation for them and uh, we'll see how far they'll be able to go. River Supers getting ready for the Savannah Conference of the Basketball League that gets underway in just a few days from now. We understand the team will be jetting out to Lagos ahead of their uh, departure to... Senegal, uh, yes, that's uh, Dakar. That's where the Savannah Conference will take place, and they will try to wish them the very best of love. After all, they are the Kingsmen from uh, River State, and uh, if they get through at least to the playoff tournament, they will be the very first Nigerian side uh, to, to qualify for the playoff. Yes, they are the first Nigerian side to play in the Basketball League in Africa. They could as well further make inroads by being the first Nigerian side to qualify for the playoff tournament. I talk about playoff tournament reminds me that. Uh, the NBA, which is a pinnacle of basketball, is into playoffs. Some teams have qualified, especially LA Lakers. They are the they have qualified from the Western Conference. Uh, we take a look at them uh, when we return from a break. Uh, how the teams are faring at the playoff tournament in the play-in to qualify for the playoff as well. But for now, LA Lakers are in a very jubilant mood. Sacramento Kings, yes. I uh, will let you know when I return from the break. How Sacramento Kings are in very good form as well in the play-in tournament in the NBA in the United States of America. Beyond the uh, ba uh, basketball, there is football. I can tell you that um, FC Barcelona have crashed out of this year's Champions League. It is uh, Paris Saint-Germain 
that has moved into the semi-final stage of the competition. Same as Borussia Dortmund of uh, Germany. When we return for a break, we'll let you know of the drama that took place last night across two centers in the UEFA Champions League. Stay with us. From the line across the ocean to the land beyond the mountains through the Sahara, we bring all sport news, live analysis, expert discussions on trending stories in politics, business, socioeconomic, sports, and documentaries. So catch all the updates on the happenings around the globe. Stay focused on the fact today. Only on ATM. Every day our lives are changed by history. We are one people, all of us. Leaders, politics. Nobody's ambition is what's the problem. I have fought a very family. Natural occurrence, war, and the world economy. I belong to everybody. ATN covers it all on ATN Politics today. Television Network and we'll bring you up to speed with the latest happening around the world of sports and uh, talking about the latest uh, in the NBA uh, it is the end of the regular season and so what we had in the early hours of this morning is the play-in tournament talking about play-in if you're a floor basketball you know that uh, 12 teams will have to qualify for the playoff tournament and uh, uh, four will have to join them courtesy of uh, play-in and uh, in the Western Conference it was drama in the early hours of this morning Kisley we saw LA Lakers up against their opponents and it turned out to be one where uh, the new LA Pelicans uh, were ousted by LA Lakers. Talking about LA Lakers reminds me of uh, LeBron James. Uh, uh, they are now advanced into the playoff tournament after taking out their opponent, the New Orleans uh, Pelicans. It was 110 points to 106 points at the end of uh, hostilities. Uh, this is uh, a very big relief uh, for LeBron James. It would have been terrible. LeBron James, early Lakers out of the playoff <laughs> tournament. <laughs> it's, still, it's still 1 to 0 in favor of uh, the LA Lakers. I think uh, uh, from what we've seen at this point in time, I uh, look forward to see you know, how it goes you know, for the LA Lakers. I think um, at the LA Lakers side, they've tried most of the kind you know, to sustain themselves you know, when it has to do with you know, the play in tournament. Last 
last season also saw them of course from the yeah, play, the play the and right. now they are also you know in the plane as well this time around and starting their first game beating the new orleans pelicans at this uh, point in time was a very impressive you know encounter for them uh lebron james uh, the man who actually amassed more points you know in that encounter for his team 23 points he got you know in that game anthony davis you know coming up with 31 points and angelo arosa with uh, 31 points it was a very good game of course you know uh, for the early Lakers side and we hope of course that they can go all the way uh, this time around because last time they, they challenged they got to the playoff and were of course you know putting up a very huge challenge we hope that uh, uh, this uh, this particular performance of course will not end on the road we hope they'll be able to of course uh, to live up to expectation and see how they can challenge for the title wow talking about well, a playing tournament uh, we've seen the early Lakers qualify now uh, it was for the playoff one team that didn't qualify, uh, and very shocking at that, is uh, the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they were eliminated by uh, a relatively, do I say, uh, average team, if you ask me. Sacramento Kings, they've done so well this season. Uh, they took out uh, the Golden State Warriors. They couldn't have allowed Warriors to score uh, up to 100 points. It was 118 points to 94 points scored uh, by the Golden State Warriors. Uh, this is, uh, uh, for me... Uh, a shocking result. Very shocking. Very, very shocking. Golden State Warriors, they've not uh, been fantastic this season. Uh, they actually, you know, uh, finish in uh, the converting. They had about, uh, I think, ninth place finish. And they're uh, competing for the play in now was a very terrible one. You know, being hosted out by the Sacramento uh, Kings. I never saw this coming, of course, for the Golden State Warriors in a team where you have uh, the likes of Demon Green, Steph Curry, Clem Thompson. You know, Andrew Rixon. You expected the Golden State Warriors, of course, should that uh, they should have been able, of course, you know, to challenge the Sacramento Kings. But uh, for me, I, I think a really disappointing one. We didn't see them coming up to expectation. Steph Curry was only able to put up a total of 22 points in that game. Was so bad, you know, for a player like Demon Green with just 12 points, and uh, the likes of uh, Clay Thompson having no points, you know, in that encounter. And uh, for what we've seen at this point in time, it's really a terrible one. Last season, the Golden State Warriors, of course, were able to, you know, stretch themselves all the way. But this time, it's really an abysmal outing for them this season. And for the Sacramento Kings, another team, of course, to watch out for because last time we also saw them competing favorably. And I think from what we've seen at this point in time, uh, every team, of course, uh, should look out for them because what we've seen was really an impressive one, 118 to 94. You don't expect to see that, you know, against the Golden State Warriors, but that was what we saw at the end of the day. Well, in the early hours of uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we'll see action in uh, Miami. Miami Heat will be up against the Denver 76ers, and uh, they, they, they will try to see how they can sneak into the playoff tournament. Atlanta Hawks as well will take on Chicago Bulls in yet another thrilling play in the match uh, ahead of the team. So now we now know that in the Eastern Conference there is boosting Celtic in the playoff. There's New York Knicks, Milwaukee Bucks, Cleveland Cavaliers and Orlando Magic are on, and uh, Indiana Spacers are the teams that have made it up with the playoff tournament in the Eastern Conference. Then ahead in the Western Conference so far it's Oklahoma City Thunder, Denver Nuggets. Talking about Nuggets, you know they are the defending champions. Minnesota Timberwolves, Los Angeles Lakers and um, Clippers, Dallas Mavericks and Phoenix Suns. Of course, now you can add the LA Lakers into that uh, group of qualifiers for the playoff in the in tournament. Uh, playoff tournament coming up. Uh, this is very interesting, and uh, we hope to see how this uh, pans out in the playoff uh, tournament. Uh, you know that uh, after the playoff, we can move yet to another, depending on the seeding. Uh, you have to see teams compete there. You know that it's the seventh and the eighth team that will try to qualify, and of course, the ninth and the tenth place teams as well will try to qualify for the playoff uh, but actions are really really uh, matches if you follow basketball look out for them in the early hours of uh, tomorrow morning meanwhile let's go to football quickly and uh, kissley uh the federation's cup is into very crucial stages right now yeah very crucial stages we hear that uh, the draw of course uh, will be made uh, tomorrow uh for the men's and uh, the women's uh, games and uh, looking very very impressive and uh, for uh, for the national competition in the men's draw, you know, has been trimming you know, we here to 64 following last week, you know, playoff matches that saw the elimination of Classic FC, of Adamawa, Simon Ben Academy, and uh, the rest of uh, the team. And uh, we had the main competition as well. I uh, will begin with round of 64 
matches before the round of 32 and then round of 16. Uh, they've told they've told into the quarterfinals, semi-final, and the grand uh, fina finale. So it's going to be an impressive one. We'll keep our fingers crossed and see how the draw, of course, uh, will look like tomorrow. And uh, for the team, of course, down here in River State, uh, we hear the Rivers uh, United, of course, they were able to get past Ofrima FC, you know, to qualify as uh, the team that will be representing the states. And the uh, Rivers Angels also are uh, the teams uh, that uh, will also represent uh, the state, you know, at this uh, point in time. So, a uh, good one so far. And uh, I think it's actually coming timely. Um, the league is about to come to an end. I think the board, uh, the NFF are trying to make sure that, you know, um, the uh, Federation Cup, of course, uh, won't take time uh, to end as well, so that they can possibly put up uh, the season calendar uh, in order. Well, uh, quickly, let's look at uh, the Nigeria Premier League. Uh, we are entering to very business end of the league as well. Uh, Rangers International look to be keeping firm grip on that top spot after beating their, their blessed neighbours, uh, Harland uh, FC, in uh, sorry, in a Abia crucial Warriors. time. Yeah. Abia Warriors. Yeah, it was a very impressive one. Of course, you expected it to be a little bit difficult for Abia Warriors to go down to the cathedral uh, down there to get, you know, all three points. Enugu Rangers, of course, were able to stood their ground and go to that impressive three points. And I think they're looking very optimistic in maintaining that top spot and also eyeing the title, you know, as uh, it's time. It was March the 30. Uh, we have about uh, eight games, you know, remaining. Uh, this season now you see if they continue like this talking about the Nugu Rangers they have what it takes you know to actually win the title for themselves at the Dokia Messi Maker Stadium Rivers United uh, started uh, do I say uh, live in the Premier League proper again now uh, after crashing out of the uh, Calf Confederation Cup and uh, they were able to beat uh, their opponent uh, Plateau United their visitors so to say by three goals to one uh, it was three nil up till the last second of that encounter at the Adoki says when the Platinum scored their loan uh, goal. Uh, I put to the coach, you need all three points and all, number of goals you can get. Uh, considering that last minute goal was, uh, for me, not a very good one, uh, the players must concentrate to the end to see whether they can return back to top level position because right now mm. they, they, they are uh, out of the top 10 yeah. in the Premier League here in Nigeria. Out of the top 10, uh, as it stands now, and uh, they really need this point, they need high level of concentration now to be able to finish up their outstanding games and as well as uh, the remaining games, you know, for uh, the season. Uh, despite that win yesterday, they still remain in seven, uh, seven, eight, 17 position. That's to say that they really have to make sure that they up their game. But it's a good one because they can continue to, you know, amass those points because it's very, very important at this point in time. Anything distraction, I think Rivers United, to try to avoid it. Even this uh, Federation Cup that will be playing, we hope it will not bring distraction to them because as it stands now, if you take a look at where they are now, it's very, very steep. They're still 17, Aqua United at 18, Atlanta 19, and Gumbi United uh, on the 20th position. So they have to do everything they can uh, to make sure they survive relegation. But for me, despite uh, that late goal we saw them concede, I think it was a good one. They were able to take all three points at home. Quara United where they were saying the way winners uh, yesterday because they beat Gombe United at the Pantamis Stadium by two goals to one. Gombe United, uh, you need to see their life, uh, you know, <laughs> at lower rung, uh, very unbearable. Yeah, uh, they are sitting at the bottom of the log uh, with just 22 points after 30 games, you know, so far for them. Relegation not too far from them, if you ask me at this uh, point in time. Gombe United, uh, one team we thought, of course, we're going to come, you know, take uh, the league, you know, uh, to another level, but uh, we've seen them drown it at this uh, point in time. Quarra United, very impressive. Not done so, they've not done so bad uh, this season. Uh, with the seated 14, with 36 points time, they really have to up their game you know, at this point because despite that victory, uh, they still remain in 18 position as it stands with 34 points so far uh, for them. Aqua United is not a team for me, if you ask me, that should go down to relegation. They are too big you know, to go down to relegation. But was very impressive a victory against Niger Tunis. If you take a look at Niger Tunis, they are one of the side in the Nigerian Premier Football League that have done so well. They are still tenth on the log, you know, as it stand. They've, you know, at class so many teams been their insurance, you know. But good one for Aqua United. They were able to come all out, you know, to put up uh, those goals. And I think for me, if they continue like this, they might be surviving relegation. Away from the Premier League here in Nigeria, let's get a reaction from about. Uh, this Golden Eagles coach, uh, they are expected to prepare for the Wafu Under-17 
uh, tournament coming up in Ghana, and Manu Garoba has invited 51 players uh, to camp ahead of this tournament. Uh, Kinsley, 51 players, uh, that's quite a number uh, to bring down to the one that will be going to the tournament in just a few days from now. 51 players, and I think uh, Manu Gabal is, uh, I, you know, he knows what he's looking for. You know, at this point in time, maybe he wants to get the best, you know, and uh, he, he that's why he's assembling these 51 players at the end of uh, the day. It's actually a trial, trial, trial for the boys. If you're able to do well, of course, you stand a chance of getting into uh, the team that uh, will be, of course, uh, uh, going for that uh, particular tournament, I think, uh, in uh, uh, Ghana. So let's see how it is. Manu Gaba once again has been given the job. We hope, of course, he'll be able to deliver. Of course, he has done exploit so far. At the previous, you know, uh, moments where he actually uh, handed, you know, where he actually handled the team. So he's, a, he's an experienced manager. I will hope, of course, to see another impressive outing, you know, for uh, the team. Well, the good Eagles of Nigeria preparing for the tournament that coming up in Ghana and Marograba with 51 players in camp uh, uh, ahead of this one should be able to know exactly what to do, pulling the guys down to manageable number uh we will uh, quickly look at the uh, uefa champions league now and last night at the olympic stadium in spain uh, we saw fc barcelona host uh, paris saint germain from a 2-1 uh, 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 standpoint uh, they had actually gone to paris and beating the champ uh, PSG, psg by two goals to one so they were in advantage but surprisingly uh, we saw 4-1 in favor of the visitors, Paris Saint Germain at the end of 90 minutes plus added time, and uh, two red cards were brandished in that encounter with several yellow cards. And right now, Xavi Hernandez, the coach of FC Barcelona, one of the red carded uh, personnel last night in the, the Olympic Stadium, is called the referee a disaster for giving uh, a player of uh, FC Barcelona a red card in that encounter. For me, that was a deserving. A record. I don't know what you think, uh, Kinsley. Yeah, for me, it was uh, really deserving. Actually, not a very kind of, you know, you know, action, of course, uh, you expected. But that is what it is, you know, for FC Barcelona. It was really horrible and a terrible night, you know, for them uh, down there. Uh, we thought, of course, they were going to go all out, you know, to make sure they get this one. Yes, they went all out, but their best was not going to be enough. That's, you know, one man down. Uh, really affected them with the fact that even Xavi, the coach, of course, was not on the touchline. That could possibly go a long way in affecting the team, you know, not to do well. And uh, for me, it's a sad one. The last time Barcelona got to the semi-final for the UEFA Champions League was 2019. And since then, they've not been able, of course, uh, to get to that height. It's been a very struggling moment, you know, since then for Barcelona. And we thought Xavi coming in at this point in time was going to help, you know, change the narrative. Going out there at uh, Park the Park the Prince, you know, to actually get that two goals to one victory. We thought they were going to consummate things, maybe block the boys at some point and see how they can block the boys, you know, uh, from uh, uh, Park the Prince. And uh, it wasn't what, of course, uh, we expected. But uh, Lewandowski, of course, did all he can. Rafinha, you know, came up uh, with say, his best as well. But the boys were not too clinical up front. And that was why, of course, uh, we saw them, of course, considering those huge number of goals. And for Paris Saint-Germain, I think um, Luis Enrique, you know, came up with a different plan in that encounter. They went all out. You Luis know. Enrique, former Barcelona Yeah, player. former Barcelona coach, you say. Well. And of course, he helped them won the 2015 uh, UEFA Champions League. But this time around, he came to host them. Uh, Usman Dembele as well, who left Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain, also came to host them last night. I watched the encounter with someone last night. Uh, and the opinion of the guy was, uh, look at uh, the Luis uh, uh, Osman Dembele uh, playing for FC Barcelona, he was always injured, but yeah. now playing for Paris Saint Germain, no no, <laughs> there's been no injury <laughs> report about uh, Osman Dembele. <laughs> that was a really, really funny remark yeah. I had last night. Uh, it, it really tickled me and it, it made a lot of sense. I've yeah. never had him go to uh, the doctor's table yeah. where I play for Paris Saint Germain, but if, in Barcelona, he was virtually. On the hospitals, uh, doctor's table but, uh, most of the time. But it's true, Mr. Siri. The, the, the fans, Barcelona fans, you know, really wooed, uh, wooed him. No, right. Yeah, yes. when he was coming down to the stadium, they were <laughs> wooing him uh, because of uh, the things he did down there when he was, uh, you know, in the team. Well, but, I think the FC Barcelona fans have to take so they, they have the classical coming up uh, this weekend. Let's hope that they can uh, go past Real Madrid. But Real Madrid right now have almost an eight point lead between them on the league table out there. But like he's mentioned, no uh, Champions League football semi-final for FC Barcelona. They crashed out.
Meanwhile, uh, in the other centre, we saw Borussia Dortmund in Germany, you know, beat Atletico Madrid by four goals. In fact, aggregate score line it was uh, a, a five four. Uh, no one expected this one, uh, especially because uh, uh, we saw Atletico Madrid cruise well at the two one uh, in the very first leg, and they were capable of uh, organising their defence line from what we've seen of them this season. But they all crumbled uh, at the end of the day, four two on the night. Uh, an aggregate scoreline of 5-4. Uh, Everyone thought that uh, it was going to be difficult for Borussia Dortmund to qualify, but now Dortmund is in the semi-final of this year's UEFA Champions League. Surprising, surprising, I tell you, to see Dortmund in semi-final. You take a look at the German Bundesliga, they are even struggling to qualify for, you know, uh, continental position. They are seated fifth now on the log, and uh, getting past, you know, Atletico Madrid, I think for me, was really, really a surprising uh, result. Uh, it's so sad, you know, uh, for Diego Simeone, uh, he's been in the team for a very long time and not been able to take them, of course, to a reputable position when it has to do with continental games. And uh, for me, I think uh, we take a look at the way uh, the Borussia Dortmund side played. I think they really deserve that victory. Well, in the other half of the semi-final tonight, there will be Bayern Munich up against Arsenal. Arsenal travel all the way to Germany. Can they survive after a 2-2 scoreline at the Emirates Stadium? It's going to be a very tight one, Mr. Siri, for us now. It's not been a very good week. We've you seen know. a Paris Saint Germain, you know, travel to, <laughs> to Spain to qualify. Why not? Uh, yeah, you, but you won't compare the strength of uh, Paris Saint Germain to us now. And there's uh, no Mbappe. Yes. <laughs> Last time we saw Mbappe score two goals. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, uh, quickly, I, I think uh, it is even game. And 90 minutes from other uh, time, they should be able to, uh, to find their way to the semi final of the UEFA Champions League. We're running out of time, so we quickly will look at the other pairing. Uh, Manchester City will be in action as well against uh, Real uh, Madrid. What chances do Real Madrid have or Bayern? I'm sorry, uh, uh, City in this game. City? Well, I, I think Madrid. Three, three ended in the first leg. Yeah, I think Madrid had a very slim chance. It, uh, uh, City, uh, City had, at their home ground, Etihad Stadium, so they have everything. So if they can go away and take a draw. At the Etihad Stadium, I tell you, they have everything they, ca they, they need uh, to go through. Well, we'll take an in-depth look at uh, the features coming. Manchester City and the Real Madrid. These two encounters ended on a draw note uh, in the first encounter.